Hey everybody, David East here from the Firebase team at Google. And on today's episode of Firecast, we're gonna get started with the Firebase Android SDK, which only takes like 30 seconds to get started with. And after that, we're gonna go and build a little app. So let's get started. So right here is just Android Studio. And to get Firebase installed, we actually can use a nifty little shortcut. So we can go to File, and then Project Structure, and then click down here in the Cloud section and then check the Firebase checkbox. And then when we hit OK, it's going to set up Firebase in our app. And so we'll go into our Gradle file and jump into presentation mode. And you can see down here that inside the dependencies section, it actually set us up the Firebase dependency right here. And there is one step that we have to do by hand, and that's up here we need to specify the packaging options. And this just avoids some of the build errors with duplicate licenses. So the next thing you do is go into the Android manifest and you can see that what it also did was is it added the internet permission since you know we have to talk to the internet. So that's pretty much all it takes to get started with the Firebase Android SDK. So now that we have that done, we're gonna go and build our app. It's going to be a social, local, mobile, crowdsourced weather app that tells you if it's sunny or foggy in San Francisco. Okay, it's really just like a text view with two buttons, but it will teach you the fundamentals of building a Firebase app. So let's get started with that. So what we'll do is we'll go into our resolution folder and open up our main activity layout. We'll drag a large text view as well as two buttons. And each one of these buttons will represent sunny and the other button will represent foggy. And then when we click on one of these buttons, we'll want to update the text view with the current condition. So we'll call it text view condition. And now that we have the UI set up, we need to create an application file. So the first thing you need to do when you're working with Firebase is you have to set the Android context. And it's best to do this at the very beginning of the application lifecycle. So to do that, you can create a new class, which will be an application class. And the name of our application is CrowdWeather, so we'll name it that, and we'll extend from android.app.application. And this will give us hooks into the entire lifecycle of our app. So when the app first boots up in onCreate, we can set the Android context here. So we'll call Firebase.setAndroidContext and pass in this. And this is really all that we have to do code-wise, except we need to wire up this application class to the application. So we'll say android.name.crowdweather. So now it's wired up to fire off for our application. So now we're gonna open up our main activity and we're going to get our UI as properties. So we have our text field as well as our two buttons. And then we need to initialize those. So in on start, we're going to use find view by ID to get all three of those UI elements. Now that we have the UI elements, let's hook up our first Firebase reference. So we'll declare that as a property. And so we'll have this Firebase class and we'll call it mref. And this is the class that you'll mostly be dealing with when you're working with Firebase. And to create it, we'll come down here and we'll say mref equals a new Firebase. And this expects a string, which is a URL. And you get this URL when you create your Firebase database. And this is really, you can consider it a connection string. And so this is the root of our Firebase database. And we want to save data just to one specific location. So we can say slash condition, because the slash is the root. And then condition is one place where we can save data. And we can save whether it's sunny or foggy right here. So now that we have the connection to Firebase set up, we want to synchronize the data changes to the text field. So what we can do is we can create what is known as an value event listener. And so we can say mref.addValueEventListener and then do a new value event listener. And this gives us an anonymous inner class with two methods, the onDataChange method and the onCancelled method. And onDataChange will get fired every single time that the data changes in your Firebase database. And onCancelled is if there is an error. So inside on data change, we can get the data back as an object. So we can say object data, and we can get it from the data snapshot. So the data snapshot is not just your data. It also contains a lot of other helper methods, right? As you can see right here. But the one we're interested in right now is get value. So we'll call get value, which will return our data back as just a plain object. And then using our text field, we could say set text and pass in the data. 
except for the fact that set text doesn't expect an object, it expects a string. So we can change it to, rather than object data, say string text. And then inside of get value, we can provide the class that we're expecting. So in this case, we want a string. So we could say string.class. And what's important to note here is that it doesn't just work for primitives. We also could create your own custom POJO, and it would deserialize it to that class as well. So now we just change it to the text. And every single time the condition changes in our Firebase database, it will fire off this function and update our text field. So let's see this in action. So we're viewing the data in a data viewer called Vulkan, which is just a Chrome extension. You can see the link in the comments. But now if you click Add, and we'll set our condition key, and we'll set the value to really anything we want right now. And we save that, we can see it shows up in our view. And we can edit it. And so we really wanted to say sunny or foggy, so we'll change this to foggy. And we can see that it updates on our page in real time. But as we tap sunny right there, nothing happened. So we really want to change this text field every time we tap one of these buttons. So if we tap sunny, we want to update condition, which will therefore update foggy. And the same thing for foggy, it'll update condition, which will therefore update this text field. So we can create two on-click listeners for our buttons. So set an on-click listener for foggy, where we create a new on-click listener. And inside here, we can call our reference and call the set value function, where we pass through the string foggy. And the way this works is, is when set value is called, it will save the data to the slash condition location. So the way you can think about set value is, is that when you call set value, it will update the listener, which therefore updates the text field. And we also want to just copy this for now, just to do it for the sunny button as well. So for M button sunny, we just need to change the value to sunny rather than foggy. So in action, if we tap sunny, it changes the value to sunny and the same for foggy. And it all does it in real time. So as you can see, it's super easy to get started with the Firebase Android SDK, and it's also really easy to build apps with. That's all for this Firecast, but tune in for next week's edition where we're gonna cover events in Firebase. So thanks for stopping by, and we will see you next time.